I thought today we would switch it up a little bit. I've been sharing the last uh, few weeks in a row, and I wanted to make sure that, you know, our church is built up of so many great voices and so many incredible leaders. And I love coming to staff meeting and, you know, Chris and Adrian, they drive this meeting and they create the content of this meeting. And I'm just grateful for them. But so many of you guys have just so many different skills and talents. And I thought it'd be cool today to hear from uh, one of the greatest leaders in our church, leads our JDD location. That is none other than Pastor Dakota Duron. And uh, just proud of how Dakota has been leading and just coming up with unique ways to connect and love these guys are setting a record with Vu High. And it's funny because last night I was talking to Chris and Adrian uh, about this meeting and Chris was like, hey, so you're on tomorrow to encourage. I said, no, I'm not going to encourage. And he said, what do you mean? I said, oh, I want Dakota to speak tomorrow. He's like, oh, cool. You want me to want me to let him know? And I was like, no, nah, don't let him know. He goes, what do you mean? I was like, I'm going to tell him 15 minutes before the meeting. Uh, I want him to be ready in season and out of season. And Chris goes, yeah, sure. I won't say a word. And I wrote back, ha ha ha. I'm kidding, Chris. I'm not going to do that to somebody. It's like something my dad did to me my whole life growing up. My dad used to call me out like, Rich, get up here. You got a word. I'm like, I don't have a word, dad. But um, all that to say, I just love our team. Um, so proud of them. Dakota, so proud of you. Uh, miss you and Blair so much. Love you guys. And I just wanted Dakota to encourage us today. And I know some of his thoughts he's going to be bringing. So let's take some notes. Let's lean into it. Let's shout them down in the comments. And uh, the floor is yours, Dakota Duran. Awesome. Thank you, Pastor Rich. What's going on, everybody? What a staff meeting we've got going, hosted by DJ Melchizedek so far, man. This has been the best one. Uh, we're going to be reading in the message translation. It's a really, really cool verse. It goes like this. And this way, we are like the various parts of a human body. Each part gets its meaning from the body as a whole, not the other way around. The body we're talking about is Christ's body of chosen people. Each of us finds our meaning and function as a part of his body. But as a chopped off finger or cut off toe, we wouldn't amount to much, would we? So since we find ourselves fashioned into all these excellently formed and marvelous functioning parts in Christ's body, I love this. Let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be. Somebody type that in the chat. Let's just be what we were made to be. I know we're doing a lot of new things, but we need to focus on our inner being. We need to focus on the people that we are becoming. So let's be what we're made to be. And I just have three quick thoughts for us all. The first one is, let's be genuine with our love. Let's be genuine with our love. Short, short version of that point is just, let's have real love. Verses nine says, love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Right now, I mean, Kat was just talking about it. We're creating protocol for pastoral staff because there's so many people under the care of each and every person on this call. I think right now there's more of a demand on our love, on our attention, on our encouragement, probably than we've ever experienced in our lives. Uh, people are confused. People are tired. People are walking through tough times. And what I've discovered, I don't know about you, but in the moments that we're extending our love and we're extending our encouragement, uh, we also get to learn a little bit about ourselves. Verse nine, it tells us where this love uh, is, should be coming from. And it says something very challenging. It says, we loving from the center of who we are. Are we loving from the center of who we are today? Is our love genuine? Is our love real? And your job, is your love real? And your family, is, is your love real? And your team, is your love real? Or are we faking it? I think uh, I asked this question not as a challenge to you, but more of a question to help us know where we are as a, a, a gauge. How are we doing? Have you ever felt like you were just, just going through the motions? Have you ever felt like you're just trying to get through another day? I know for me, it's kind of hard to call people out on that just in regular life, but in sports, it's really easy to tell. And uh, my freshman year of college, I was out in West Texas, in Abilene, Texas, everybody. And uh, this is about as far away and different from Miami as you can get. Let me tell you that. Uh, our coach, man, he was a good guy, but he was a fired up guy. And man, every few weeks he would lose it on this whole thing. Stop going through the motions. Stop going through the motions. Stop going through the motions. What are you saying? Don't just show up to practice and do the bare minimum. Just don't show up to practice and loaf. Don't just do what you're supposed to do. It's how you're doing it. The reason I think Coach Collins, our coach, he was so serious about that is because he knew that if we showed up and just went through the motions, that that day we weren't going to get any better. 
We were going to stay stagnant. We weren't, we weren't going to grow. Let me tell you something. It's the same thing in our relationships. If we don't, if we go through the motions, if we fake it, our relationships, they're not going to improve. Even with time, they're just going to stay right where they are. But if we love with the real love, with our real selves, then our relationships are going to continue to grow. Then we're going to continue to deepen our connection with team. Let's use this opportunity to deepen our connection with people. Well, let's go back to this question. Are you faking it? If you're faking it, we need to identify why. I know for me, I've had to ask myself this question. And I think many times we fake it because we fear who we are is not enough. We believe if we love from who we are, we'll let people down. We're not spiritual enough that we don't have all the right words to say, that we don't have enough to give. But today I want to read this first as an encouragement. Love from the center of who you are, knowing Christ has put inside of you all that you need. Know that you're the leader that you need to be. Know that all you have is all that you need. You're the mom, you're the dad, you're the wife, you're the husband that's needed. Come on, why don't you put your hand over your heart, just say, I need to be me. I need to be me. That's the reminder in this season, man. I, I think there's a lot of people right now who probably feel stresses to be things that you've never had to be. Yeah, I think we all need to feel the pull but I think we also need to go back to the fundamentals of who we are and who we are, who Voo Church needs in this moment. We need you. So work on your leadership, but work on your love. Work on your organization, but work on your care. Work on your skills, but work on your encouragement. I love what it says. It's very specific. Be good friends who love deeply, have real love. Man, in this season, I would encourage all of us, let's be genuine with our love. Let's not go through the motions. We need you to be you. Pastor Keith Kraft from Frisco, Texas, he always says, God gave you a, fingertip, a fingerprint that only you have so you can leave an impact that no one else can leave. I think in this moment, uh, we need you. But in this, in this point, really what I would encourage you is that we need to identify the moments that we can love genuinely. And so this week, whether it's in a Zoom call, whether it's in a, a call with your mom, actually, uh, DJ Melchizedek, he told us yesterday, we need to be calling our mothers. So we need to all, that's just a helpful reminder out there from Angel. <laughs> whatever it is, whether it's a call with team, off month meetings, man, let's identify moments that we can be genuine and grow in our love. So let's be what we were made to be. First reminder, let's be genuine with our love. Second reminder, let's be innovative in our generosity. Let's be innovative in our generosity. Verse 11 says, don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Be alert, servants of the master, cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the, pray all the harder. And then be inventive in hospitality. I like that. I know Sam likes this verse right here. Inventive, having the ability to create or design new things or to think originally. I like this idea of inventive hospitality because it, it means that we have to adapt and we have to change. And that's where we find ourselves right now. We've been doing church the same way for so long, but it doesn't mean that we can't be hospitable right now. In fact, this verse is, is prodding us. Let's be inventive. I don't know about you, but I like that. I like that, that we don't have to do it the same way all the time. That can be excellent but I like that it uses this word inventive. Sometimes the best inventions and innovations come from problems. And I, I think that in business, Eric could, could teach this a lot better than me, but inventions and innovation so many, so many times comes from places of people hitting a brick wall, hitting an obstacle, things being difficult, but they don't stop and turn the other way. They figure out a way to fix it. Um, my dad has, uh, has five boys, and uh, his oldest, Danny Rodney, he's, uh, I guess he's eight, year, eight years older than me. Whenever he's in high school, he was obsessed with baseball, and uh, he loved to practice. And so he would ask my dad oftentimes, hey, let's go out to the baseball field. Can you hit me some grounders? My dad would say, yeah, let's go. My dad would try to hit him grounders, and he just wasn't very good at it. And my dad's a competitive human being, and this wasn't making my dad very happy. Yes, Manushka, he was hitting him a grounder. Great job right there. He was hitting him grounders, but my dad, he just wasn't, con he just wasn't consistent with it. So he called the, the high school coach and he said, hey, coach, what I need you to do is I need you to find a baseball machine that can throw my son grounders so I don't have to waste his time with hitting him bad reps. 
coach came back. He said, we don't have it. They said, let's invent it. So here comes this whole uh, journey of the fungo man. You fast forward 15, six, 16 years later, uh, the fungo man is owned by every major league baseball team um, in, in the major leagues right now. You can find it at spring trainings. There's high school teams all over the country. Um, Daniel Kujin, one of the guys that we all love, he, he works for this company still to this day. They're selling machines all over the country so that players can practice by themselves. What happened? They hit a stop, but they didn't stop. They said, let's, let's innovate. Let's solve the problem. Right now, I want to encourage all of us, man. I, I think we're running into problems. I think we're, we've hit a stop where we can't do the same thing that we've always done. And we don't just need Pastor Rich and Pastor Don Cherie and Adrian and Chris coming up with innovative ideas to move our church to the next level. We need to be innovative to connect with people that we've never had the opportunity to connect with. Let's think new thoughts. Let's dream new dreams. Let's not think inside this, this world that we can't do certain things. No, instead, when we hit a roadblock, let's keep pushing. Who knows? We, we might come up with something that changes the world. This week, I know we can, uh, we can make it better. And we can, be, uh, we can be inventive. And I think sometimes that can be a burden to carry. But, it, but it's not a burden to carry. It's a blessing. It's a blessing that we're not having to do the same thing over and over again. It's a blessing that we get to look at our space with fresh eyes each and every week and say, Lord, teach me how I can do this better than I ever have before. But there are barriers to innovation. If you look up innovation very quickly, that, that's one of the first things that comes up. And I found seven that I think that we should be aware of that could uh, hinder us from being innovative in this time. How do you know we, we don't need anything uh, hindering us right now? We need all barriers out the window. We need to be as innovative as possible. So the, the list is this, fear of failure, short-term thinking, lack of collaboration, no time, lack of focus, lots of ideas, no delivery, and lack of urgency. And I, I think this is so important that we see some of the things on this list. Number one is fear. Are we afraid to try? Number two, short-term thinking. Man, Pastor Rich was encouraging us as directors this morning. This is not a short-term thing. This is forever changed church. Can we think long-term? Where is the future of this headed? Lack of collaboration. Oh, come on, that shouldn't be a problem at Boo Church. Boo Church has changed the paradigm of creatives, that we collaborate, that we don't isolate, that we don't do things in silos, that we work together to achieve what we couldn't otherwise. No time, we gotta make time. We gotta go for it. I remember in the early days of Fungo Man, uh, Coach Rami, Daniel's dad and my dad, man, they would be sitting at the kitchen table till midnight, laughing and dreaming. Come on, we need some people to make some time. Lack of focus, we need to find our focus. Lots of ideas, no delivery, and no, we need follow through. Lack of urgency, no, in this season, we gotta continue to hustle. And I do wanna shout out some people right now uh, because in this time, uh, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir because there's been so many things invented, if you will, in VU Church over the past few weeks. Uh, number one, Pastor Rich in D.C. and D. wrote a song, Shelter In. Come on, shout out somebody out. VU Kids Online, ladies and gentlemen, has been created. VU VU has invaded the Facebook space. Growth track having over 200 views. We're creating groups, bricklayers group online. The VU vault is bringing helpful content each and every week. We always want to put legs on our content. We never want content to die. We want to keep bringing it back up. I don't know if we would have had that idea if we wouldn't be in this moment. And for the first time, we streamed into a correctional facility this past week at the 10 a.m. service. And so I just think it's pretty incredible that yeah have we hit some obstacles yeah have we hit some roadblocks yes but it's created innovation obstacles they can create they can become op opportunities so so quickly so this week what do we need to do we need to identify opportunities for innovation what problem am i facing today that could help me innovate tomorrow so first reminder let's be genuine with our love let's be inventive in our generosity and number three Let's be constant in our prayer. Let's be constant in our prayer. Read verses 11 through 13 again. 
It says, don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Be alert servants of the master, cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. Come on, that's a good word. What I love is the language of how it says, keep yourselves fueled and aflame. And I think right now, more than ever, we've seen that it's our own personal obligation and responsibility to keep ourselves fueled and aflame. It's no one else's responsibility. Man, I love the fact that we get to meet for staff meeting uh, right here each and every week. I love the fact that we have multiple church services on Sunday. I love the fact that we have crew. I love the fact that we have team leader night. We're adding things into huddles. We're getting encouraged, but it's no one else's responsibility but our own to keep ourselves fueled and aflame. We have to take the time to fill ourselves up. Um, I don't know about you, but whenever I was first starting out in high school, I had a pretty ratchet ride. Why don't everybody just type in your, uh, your make and model and year of your first car? Come on, I, I wanna see this right now. I think this is very important. We're gonna get to know each other a little bit better. 95 Honda Accord. 90, I saw a 98 Ford Explorer, which is a classic, by the way. Mustangs, Honda Pilot, Chevy Malibu, 92, shout out to whoever that was. 90 Nissan Turbo, let's go Teresa Rivera. Um, for me and D, I actually, actually got a decent car my sophomore year, but like my freshman year, my Grammy was letting us drive around <laughs> David D. Ford Excursion. That was the most ridiculous thing we ever drove. We were driving around at one point. A Dodge minivan that was like 20 years old, and this thing was nasty. Like, I think like I was over the other day, I drove past, past Rich's house, and they have this Honda Odyssey. Yo, this is not the look of this minivan, okay? This thing was nasty. You know, you know the, the smell of like the cloth seats when they just have that, that distinct smell? It's not from you. It's just, oh, it's just it's not good. It, it was a whole deal. And uh, we were driving this car through the summer and driving it to, to practice. <laughs> Minivans are underestimated. Uh, we were driving it to practice, et cetera. I remember one day the hood started to, to burn up, man. We didn't know what the deal was. I just knew that there was like this red light that was on the dash for a long time. I didn't pay attention to. And uh, we didn't actually change the oil, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, this thing burned up, yo. And uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't good. They had to do some major repairs to this car. Luckily, we weren't driving it for very long after this. Uh, but immediately, I realized, man, Eve, in automobiles, it's, it's the same as life. We have to take some time to fill up or we're going to run into trouble. And what I see from this verse is that it says, don't give up in hard times. So burnout doesn't come from hard times. Burnout comes from not filling up. Burnout doesn't come when you're grinding, yo. Burnout comes when you don't take the time to stop to put the oil in the car. And I know there's so many people right now, yo, you're grinding. But let me tell you, right now, this is just a season. And as you're up in your work, you got to up your devotion. You got to up your prayer. You got to up your time in God's word. I just want to encourage someone, don't think it's the work. Don't make the enemy the work. No, you just have to be aware of the work so that you can be aware of the intake and the input that you need in your life. Burnout doesn't come from hard times. It comes from not filling up. What is our input? What are we plugged into? I love this thought. Aflamed, it says aflamed. Aflamed is fire. Here's a question, a very a challenging question. Can we describe our relationship with God as on fire. And this time, I think that's a good goal for all of us. I think that by the end of this quarantine, that we should come out on fire. We shouldn't just be in this thing, being around meetings. No, we should be taking in the meet. We should be blazing, Zach Wendell. We should come out and we should be stronger. And so there's two ways that really I, I saw that you should keep yourself fueled in a flame. And number one is, is quitting is not an option. Quitting is not an option. So right now, man, I know some, some of you on this call, uh, you're in businesses, you're in 
uh, management and, and it's getting tough and it's getting to the point where maybe this thought has come into your head, but can we just take this thought out of our head? Quitting, it's not an option. And number two is pray all the harder. I love, I love this point of this verse. Pray all the harder. Here's my interpretation. Pray hard. Pray hard, yo. Like if there's, if there's one way that we should be praying right now, we should be praying hard. We should be praying with fervor. We should be praying powerful prayers. Pray hard. I love what John 5, 15 through 14 says, or 14 through 15 says. It says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that we, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. I want to encourage some, someone today that, that God, he does hear you. Romans 8, 26, it says, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans and words we cannot express. Even if you don't know what to say right now, pray hard. Get in your prayer closet. Pray hard. Uh, Notre Dame, before they go out onto the field for their football team, they always slap this sign. It says, play like a champion today. Play like a champion today. And I always have loved that. And uh, play like a champion today is not just slapped whenever they, they go onto the game field but it's when they go into the practice field. So I want to encourage each and every person on this call is let's pray like a champion today. Let's pray like a champion today. Let, let's, let's pray like we've never prayed. Let's refuel ourselves and take personal responsibility for who we are. But if we're going to take our prayer life to the next level, if we're going to pray constantly, we have to make space. I would encourage you, find some time this week and you can make some space. And my last thought is this. During this time, I think we're throwing content and content and content. I think we should. I think we should keep throwing content. I think we should keep creating. What I want to encourage the people on this call is that you shouldn't just be around these experiences online. I think you should be having God experiences of your own. Don't just hear the gospel. But right now, you need to experience the gospel. You need to experience the Holy Spirit invading your living room. You need to have powerful moments on your own without Greg and Luke leading you in worship, without Pastor Rich bringing the whole 715 on their feet. Now, that's all great, and I think that charges us up, but this is our responsibility. So I love you guys so much, and those, those three reminders I think are just three of so many things that, that Paul writes to the Romans, but let's be who we were made to be. Let's make a difference. This quarantine may have stopped what you do, but it not stopped the progress of who you are. Come on, let's pray right now. And uh, Chris or Adrian or Pastor Rich can, can take us out of here. Lord, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for, uh, for the opportunity to be in this community, God. Thank you for our pastors, Pastors Rich and Don Cherie. God, I pray right now that uh, they would feel the love of this staff and this community and our gratitude for their leadership. Uh, thank you, Jesus, uh, for them and their lives and their boys, wild and Wyatt. God, I pray in this time that you would strengthen them, that you would place your hand on them. God, I pray for our church. Pray in this time that as we're separated, I pray that you would strengthen us individually so when we come back together, we'll be stronger than ever. God, I pray right now for people on this call that are going through difficult times and their health in their business. I pray you be with them. I pray that today that you will encourage them. And I pray that for all of us, that we continue to be the men and women that we were meant to be. We love you, Jesus. In your precious name we pray. 